Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we have another video from Clyde. This one is a follow-up to another video that I did where we talked about, or well, he talked about uh, how strong was uh, Soul Society Ichigo. This one focusing on a, another iteration which came after him, which is Vasto Lorde Ichigo, the one that made his appearance during his fight with Ukiora, and pretty much probably one of the coolest moments in all of anime. And... I'm curious to hear his video and to find out just how powerful was Ichigo in this form. So let's go ahead and just check volume and play. I think it goes without saying that Ichigo's transformation into the Vasto Lorde Hollow known as White is without a doubt one of, if not the coolest transformations in anime. This chain of events to most people is their favourite moment in the manga and anime of Bleach. Ichigo was able to overcome Renji, defeat the monster Kenpachi, he was able to defeat his opposing view of justice Byakuya, and in his third fight with Grimjow, he was finally able to defeat his rival in battle. So when Ichigo Ichigo wasn't able to overcome Ukiora, it was quite shocking. Ukiora had become a threat so large that it felt like his power was alien to Uryu. He was shown to have a transformation that supersedes his first transformation, eclipses the mm -hmm. other adversaries shown among the series, and it appears that all hope is lost for Ichigo. Ichigo went from being completely annihilated by a force so great that it resulted in the main character himself actually being killed, to a table-flipping turn of events which took Ukiora or the dominator in this scenario and changed him into the victim. This was and will always be one of the most iconic moments in Shonen Jump magazine. But I'm sure you've all asked yourself at least once when watching or reading this famous bout of fisticuffs, how strong was that form of Ichigo? Because we only see it once in the series, mm -hmm. a half evolved version of White, and then a version where Ichigo can use the powers of White in the same way Naruto can tap into Karama's power during battle. Well, today, just like my Ukiora video, I'm gonna explain to you just how strong that form of Ichigo was was and how he could have been even much stronger than was actually shown to us viewers. So if you're a fan of Bleach, hit that subscribe button. Let's support Bleach together as a team until the Bleach anime comes back and I hope that you all enjoy this video. If you support me, mm -hmm. I'll continue to support Bleach with many videos in the future. This shouldn't necessarily need to be said, but the Vasto Lorde would without a doubt solo all of the Esparta by itself in a gauntlet. You see, what's interesting about the Vasto Lorde is that it wasn't even at full power when it fought against Ukiora or in the Halverse movie, a movie which some say, Taiji Kubo wanted his name removed from the credits and DVDs because he doesn't agree with the scaling, the narrative, and hates the movie itself. Even though he himself said his biggest complaint was only that the scriptwriter and staff didn't use all of his original ideas that they discussed together. He felt like he didn't deserve credit for the actual movie, and yet he still stated word for word that the remake of the Vasto Lorde Ichigo vs Ukiora fight was actually how he imagined the battle to go. Meaning, this overblown conspiracy that Taite Kubo despised the movie isn't actually true. Do you guys really believe that Shonen Jump and anyone that is above Taite Kubo when it comes to the industry of producing the actual manga and anime of Bleach, or just any anime? that's under the massive title of Shonen Jump, right? Do you guys actually believe that they would allow him to slander a product or speak ill of it when they are trying to sell that said product? I mean, the actual note I am referencing is a part of one of the special editions of the Bleach Hellverse movie. The fact that some people misinterpret this comment to use for power scaling arguments or to twist what's being said is incredibly dishonest and very annoying whenever I hear it come up. It's the equivalent of saying the manga isn't canon because Kubo has expressed many times in the past that there was actually major changes and things that were actually stretched out by Shonen Jump and his editors throughout the manga's run. It's basically the same thing. We also do know that the movies, although they have a weird timeline and basically don't even make any sense to the to the real continuity of the story, right, are referenced by Kubo even in the manga itself. Taite Kubo even drew a one-shot manga chapter for the movie and said once again that the Vasto Lorde versus Ukiora fight, which was at the start of the movie, is in fact 
exact how he wanted the fight to go. And as you can see in the manga version, it's much shorter than the anime mm -hmm. and the movie version. And Kubo has expressed in the past that he wasn't actually able to show a lot of things in the manga the way that he would like to do because of time constraints. And sometimes he was just happy to actually get a chapter done at the end of the week. In fact, to get back to the point, Taite Kubo wanted the title of his name to be removed because he felt like he didn't do enough to warrant the title of executive producer, which he said verbatim. If anything can be taken from this, this shows how much of a nice guy Taite Kubo actually is. Also to add, this note has never actually been officially translated, so it could have an entirely different meaning altogether. Now anyway, this is relevant because in the Bleach Hellverse movie, White has some insanely impressive feats and statements made by very important characters among the series, and it's very irritating to see people try to discredit some of the feats or statements because of the Taite Kubo comments that they just love to twist and misinterpret. Take for example, Yamamoto is surprised by the power of the Vasto Lorde, claiming it is a monster which was able to cut the chains of hell and thus being a feat which was widely known as being borderline impossible among the Bleachverse. He also put emphasis on the fact that the Vasto Lorde had not only blown open the gates of hell, putting all humans in danger, but Ichigo claims if the hollow goes rampant, it could destroy the entire world. This isn't crazy either because the Vasto Lorde shows us firsthand that its casual Cero Blast can cover multiple layers of hell, blow open the gates of hell, then expose the world to disaster with its attacks. Some like to say, well, the world being in danger is a direct result of hell and earth becoming connected. And they say this to downplay the Vasto Lorde, but Ichigo's mm -hmm. statement contradicts this, and Yamamoto, a character who, while suppressed, was going to destroy the Soul Society and much more, which is a parallel to the real world, they both say it's a threat to the entire planet. Even without all of those statements by Ichigo or Yamamoto, the Vasto Lorde casually covers multiple layers of hell with said Cero Blast, and that Cero Blast even blows open the gates of hell and affects Earth all in the same attack. That in itself is an easy multi-planetary feat because of a few reasons. Number one, the statements I showed before which are said verbatim by reputable characters. The feat itself visually, on screen, in front of our eyeballs, shows us that feat happening. <laughs> to argue against this feat, even though we have visual proof of it happening, well, you would need to be a smooth brain to do so. <laughs> hell would also need to be by default multi-planetary in size per layer of hell, or at least bare minimum, just, you know, one planet size area per layer, just bare minimum. As if you take real life for an example, we can barely sustain seven plus billion humans on Earth, and yet we know that throughout history, at least 100 billion humans have lived and died in the past. In the Bleach world, not only are we aware that Yamamoto has killed potentially trillions of souls in his lifetime, as shown by his Bankai ability to resurrect the dead, which actually puts a number on how many souls he has killed, but we know in the Bleach universe, it isn't limited to just the human world, and there are beasts from different realms, plus Hollows, Quincy, etc. Even if just a quarter of a quarter of those who have died throughout Bleach's history went to hell, let's say it's in the trillions, right, which is consistent with Yamamoto's Bankai and also the fact that there's most likely more souls than there are in our real world's history, then it still backs up my point. And as time goes on, hell would actually need to be that big anyway to sustain future souls that will go to hell and bump up the populace. Even if you want to disregard the Hellverse feats, that's absolutely fine because by just simply scaling the normal canonicity of the story, you can still get these kind of planetary level examples from the hollow inside Ichigo anyway. Something as simple as even the weakest of Esparta, if they use a Grand Ray Cero below the canopy of Los Noches, they could wipe out an area the size of a country or potentially a continent, depending on how you scale it, right? As I said in my Ukiora video, the inside of Los Noches actually appears to be much larger than it is on the outside as it's most likely a pocket dimension made by Aizen, very similar to the fool bringer known as Yukio who could make an entire replica of Katakuta Town with his ability that can make an internal pocket dimension and much more inside his own world. I don't actually believe it's limited to Katakuta Town, but he could easily perform that feat itself. And we also know this about Lost Noches because it's much easier to calculate the outside of Lost Noches than the inside, as when you actually take a look at the outside, yeah, you can pixel scale how big it is and it turns out to only be like a city-sized object. Not actually that crazy, some people even 
downplay its being even smaller. But if you actually look at the inside of Los Noches, it has its own curvature, implying it is very damn big, and it also has its own artificial light source on the inside. So it would work as simple as this. If two of the weakest Esparta, Aranjero and Zomari, can destroy Los Noches with a Gran Rey Cero hmm. in their base forms, their release states can do that by over 10 times, as we know Resurrection scale directly to Bankai, and we know the direct multiplier to how much that is. We also do know for a fact that they are based on Shinigami Bankais because this is stated by both Urahara and Aizen, very reputable characters among the series and two who have actually used the Hogyoku before. The same object mm -hmm. used to bestow the Esparta with those set abilities which are based on Shinigami powers. And we know for a fact that just Bankai Ichigo alone, the much stronger one with a Zenkai boost who fights against Ukiora, the same guy who is ranked at number four, but we all know is actually stronger than the rank of four. But for the sake of the argument, right, it, it doesn't really matter. We'll just say that he's only rank four. Well, base Ukiora would defeat Zomari and Aranjero in their destructive power, even if they were in their release forms. Now, this Bonkai Ichigo that I briefly mentioned before, who can keep up with Ukiora, he could do the exact same thing. Now, let's say this Ichigo is roughly 10 times stronger than those two individually, as he can keep up with someone that is ranked four <laughs> on the Esparta, yeah. meaning this might actually be a low ball, obviously, but anyway, it's confirmed by Grimja, Urahara, and Ukiora in their fight that Ichigo gets stronger with each battle. This is why the power scaling feels very weird in the Waco Mundo arc when Ichigo goes from fighting a Privaron Esparta to fighting the fourth Esparta out of nowhere and actually keeping up with the guy. It just feels, it feels weird, right, guys? Well, that's because he gets Zenkai boost as he fights, as I just said. His holification then gives him another 10 times increase in power when he puts on the mask because he actually uses the holification to make himself relative to Resurrections multiple times. If he didn't have the holification, Grimja would have destroyed him with absolutely, yeah, absolutely. no difficulty destroyed whatsoever. Him. And we know he masters the holification in that fight, meaning there is no reason to doubt that the multiplier is 10 rather than 3 or 5 times when he fights Ukiora. Aizen's actually the one that states he masters the holification against Grimja. Also, just, just out of uh, curiosity, I, or just to point something out, I also love how as Ichigo keeps using the holification, you can see the markings on his mask change. Like it started off as being like these three sp uh, three sort of like spikes on one side, and then during the uh, like okay yeah you, you can see you can see it right here, and then as the story progresses like for example during his fight with Grimjo it actually covers up half of his mask, and then after he went you know after he went full Vasto Lorde, the markings changed to into this and to sort of mimic the, uh, the 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 look that it had when you know his vastal order form took over and i just i i like that that was i thought that was a nice touch by kubo in their third fight base <clears throat> is then relative to this holified ichigo who should be around 20 times stronger than the Esparta that i actually mentioned his first release is then 10 times that in strength second release is then 100 times his base because 10 times 10 equals 100 very simple and thanks to the data books ukiora's seto oscudas improves his attack potency by an order of magnitude which we see proof of when he goes into his first release form and fires the seto oscudas it makes everybody below the canopy of los noches actually fall to the ground and they can't even stand when that thing is fired and then when he goes into his second release form there is a thick alien like spiritual pressure being felt from the top of lost no chairs all the way until the very moment that ukiora actually dies even while almost dead he still has this much power although this ukiora is quite strong in his second release form he has to use his seto oscuras to be able to even combat the vasto lord a seros and can barely compete with the power of those seros even while using this technique which Ams his own attack potency. This Vasto Lorde is also wearing less than half of its Shihak show, and the more spiritual pressure you have means your attack, defense, and general power is limited based on that. Ichigo specifically talks to Unahana about this, and we know that the Vasto Lorde is mixed directly with his Shinigami powers, as the hollow inside Ichigo is actually Ichigo's Asuchi, and this is why when he goes Bankai before getting his true original powers in the war arc, it works more like a Resurrection than a conventional Bankai. Uki 
you are even say is Ichigo gets a Goten shows are like black zeros when he fires them and Halibal states that Ichigo fights like an Esparta when she's watching Grimjow and Ichigo fight even Grimjow in their first fight he actually mocks Ichigo for only getting buffs in his physical attributes when he transforms into Bonkai something which Resurrections of Hollows are mostly known for this is relevant because the Vasto Lorde who is well over five to ten times stronger than this Ukiora while heavily weakened can not only completely neg Ukiora's zeros that have their own multiplier when they're fired, but block attacks with his bare hands that Ukiora uses after his Seto Oscudas's don't work, which obviously implies that the Lanzado Relampago is much stronger than the previous fired Seros, meaning he is bare minimum 10 times stronger than Ukiora. If the Seto Oscudas is only 5 times of an increase, let's lowball it because order of magnitude is very contentious when it comes to what it actually means, right? Let's just say it's only 5 times. Then the Lanzado Relampago would be bare minimum 10 times, right? Let's just add another 5 times because when it's fired, it's way more impressive than the Seto Oscudas is. And also, Ukiora whips this out as a last resort because he's like, well, the Seto's didn't work, let's whip out this, which is even bigger. He himself even says, I don't want to unleash this at close range because of how powerful it is. And the Vasto Lorde basically makes this attack look like a joke when he casually avoids it multiple times. And in the movie, he's able to blow it up with his own Seros. And he's also able to grab the attack with his bare hand and stop the attack. The same Vasto Lorde, which is apparently less than half as strong as he should be with a full Shihak show. Mm -hmm. So we could say at full power, he would be at least 25 times stronger because 2 times 10 is 20 at the extra 5 because the statement says that he is wearing less than half the Shihak show. Rounded off to 25 and bam, the Vasto Lorde can destroy Los Noches literally hundreds to thousands of times over. Meaning once again, if you want to disregard the Hellverse feats, it doesn't matter because we can merely multiply the power of what the Vasto Lorde can do based on him destroying the snow chairs. Now, if you scale the outside, sure, it's not crazy big, but he's still destroying what could be potentially a country-sized object thousands of times over. But if you want to scale the inside, he could be destroying a continental level area thousands of times over too. And because the Vasto Lorde scales to much stronger characters later on in the series, this is very consistent. There's also a feat in the first movie of Bleach where around 150-ish random Joe Blow Soul Reapers, right? They're not <laughs> strong at all whatsoever they're pulling all of their energy together and they have the power to destroy an entire dimension now a dimension could be anywhere between universal to planetary to solar system to galaxy it really just depends because we don't really know how it's meant to be interpreted when it comes to bleach in this sense but we do know for a fact that that's the amount of random fodder tier soul reaper guys that need to be together to create that amount of energy right and they're going to perform that feat which a fully powered vasto lord a hollow ichigo could easily do considering we see in the way that uh, Ukiura was able to treat those random Soul Reapers that were escorting Orihime through the Dongo. And also, even if like a thousand Soul Reapers of that caliber were to attack the Vasto Lorde, none of them could cut him. It would essentially just be like Madara versus the Shinobi Alliance, hmm. but Bleach style. We also have a pretty cool feat thanks to Grimjow, where he puts Ukiura into a different dimension using the Kaha Nagashion. Now, he states that Ukiura would only stay in here for around two to three hours, and that's in his base form. This is a pretty crazy feat because he's literally being sealed in a different dimension and he can break out of that. Also, things like the Grand Ray Cero when fired off by even base Grimjow can distort space and so on. So that in itself is pretty damn wild. And then when you consider the fact that Ukiora has a second release form, which means he could do that dimensional feat 100 times over with ease. You also have the Vasto Lorde who could do the same thing absolutely with ease too, which is crazy to think what that Vasto Lorde could do in that scenario. And hmm. then later on in the series we have Ichigo casually breaking out of Yukio. Yeah, like it was dimension. nothing just by going Bankai. Just by really going Bankai. Now, once again, as I said in my Ukiyo video, I'm not scaling these characters to that Ichigo, but the fact that they're performing pretty cool feats that are similar to what Ichigo does at that point in the story is very impressive. And then there's another planetary feat in the first movie also, which I'm not going to go into, but it just shows the consistency of how much of this stuff is actually going on in the series. Bleach characters, when it comes to planetary and beyond feats, it is very common among the series, but because it's not Dragon Ball, people don't like to hear that. As an example <laughs> to back this up, and just more evidence to show that we don't even need to use the Hellverse movie, Ichigo's mere presence alone in Shikai form, which couldn't even cut base Grimjow, and was before he learned holification, had so much strength that he could affect the entire planet with his spiritual pressure, and this was stated by Shinji, who told him to relax his power. Even lieutenants like Rongiku have to wear a seal 
control on their body that limits their Ooh. power so that they won't affect the world of the living when they fight there, let alone a Vasto Lorde who is unironically thousands of times stronger than this Ichigo and Rongiku. Ichigo even has a feat where he blocks the Sokyoku and that thing can not only overwhelm everything in existence with its spiritual pressure, according to the data books, but its power increases by 36 times when it's about to execute someone on the podium, making it the strength of 36 million Zanpakuto. And when this feat is performed, all of the captains are in shock that he can actually do this. This also isn't crazy to think about because throughout Bleach's history, the Sokyoku would need to be incredibly strong to execute threats at the same caliber of, say, people like Yuha Bark, Quincy's from the original war, which could be way stronger than we even know about, criminals like Unahana back in the day, and even captains that might have gone rogue. So for us to doubt that, why? That's all I have to say, why doubt that? Now, a lot of people like to say, well, the note which Aizen made that talks about the Sokyoku, where it says that the Sokyoku could destroy the Soul Society, they say, oh, well, this is just a lie, you know, it's a part of Aizen's note, blah, 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 doesn't make any sense, you know, it's we shouldn't listen to this. Well, here is the problem. The data books back up the idea that the Sokyoku is ridiculously strong. No one ever contests the feats of the actual Sokyoku when it's talked about in the series, you know, being the strength of 36 million Zanpakuto, uh, being able to destroy the Soul Society, blah, 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 all that. And also, the data books do specifically say that it can overwhelm everything in existence, so for us to doubt that statement because it's in Aizen's note, as I said in my Ukiora video, if he was to say in the note, the sky is blue, does that mean that the sky isn't blue? You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, even when the Vasto Lorde White fought Ishin in the chapters of Everything But the Rain, the Hollow could actually keep up with a prime Ishin, who according to Aizen, would have resorted to using Shikai and Bonkai to actually slay the Hollow itself, back when it was considerably weaker. It was actually so much weaker to the point that Aizen thought it was a failure at that time, then changed his mind after talking to Tosin, and he stated that he was very curious what it will manifest into after fusing with Ichigo's mother, a Quincy, where later on it would become Ichigo's Asuchi, which merged together to create a hybrid of Soul Reaper powers mixed with a Vasto Lorde, and the man known as Zongetsu was merely a projection of Yuha Bark, which was the manifestation of Ichigo's Quincy powers, which he would have obviously gotten from his mother. So the fact that a much weaker Vasto Lorde was able to tussle with a Ishin who, as far as we're concerned as viewers, this is the only example we have of a prime Ishin, because when Ishin gets his powers back, it's never implied that he has come back stronger by any means. All that's implied is that he got his powers back. And this Ishin that appears, the much older Ishin, when he fights Aizen, he's able to actually not only keep up with Aizen, but land multiple blows on him, which other characters couldn't even do. Sure, credit to the other characters, they were under the hypnosis, but Aizen was actually tussling with him, and although Aizen was, you know, feeling him out because he was just about to transform, and as Urahara says, he wasn't fighting like normal, he was relying more on the Hodyoku and messing around. Even with that being said, I don't believe Aizen was allowing himself to get hit by those attacks, it was a matter of fact that Ishin was able to land blows on Aizen, and the fact that this much weaker Vasto Lode scales to a stronger Ishin from back in the past, and this Ishin was willing to go Shikai and Bonkai against the Vasto Lorde, yet he never whipped those out against Aizen, and it's never actually implied that he can't use them against Aizen, we can absolutely say that yes, once again, as I even explained in my Ukiora video, it is absolutely consistent to scale the full powered Vasto Lorde to characters like Aizen, Ishin, and all of the people that are in that battle, especially because the Vasto Lorde that appears later is much stronger than the one that fought Ishin. Hopefully that gives you guys a rough idea of how strong the Vasto Lorde actually is, and not the ridiculous downplay that a lot of people who don't follow the series correctly actually spout mm -hmm. out all the time. Just remember, throughout this war with the Soul Society, Aizen made contingency plans for two major things that might happen. The first one being, he might have to fight Yamamoto, and we all know that Yamamoto has an insanely strong Zanpakuto, one that is famous throughout the history of the Soul Society, and a Bonkai which is regarded as the strongest Zanpakuto in terms of raw destructive power. Aizen made an entire being for the purpose of sealing that mm -hmm. Zanpakuto so he wouldn't have to fight it, and he also verbatim stated himself that he purposely set up Ichigo to fight particular hollows one after another to develop the hollow inside of him so that he could potentially become a worthy opponent in the future. This is also confirmed after Ichigo's battle with Aizen where he states that after clashing blades with Aizen, all he could feel from his blade was loneliness and the fact that Aizen actually wanted to be defeated by someone at the same level as him in battle. If you want more information on all of this, I really suggest that you watch my Ukiora video. If you're curious on how fast the Vasto Lorde 
actually is. I can't give you some exact number like, oh, he moves at 13,456,000 ,000 <laughs> times the speed of light because it's Damn, just Damn, I so forgot how long this video uh, uh, like actually is. Ago, but I do know how fast minutes. he should be on a high and low ball scale. No specific number, as I said, but this will give you guys a rough idea on how fast he should be. In Bleach, there are countless light speed feats ranging from the high end to low end scale among the series. You have Lieutenant Class Shinigami dodging literal light beams that are used to rescue hollows, which would include the Vasto Lord A tier hollows who have maybe come to Earth, meaning it needs to be that quick to actually rescue and take them back to Waco Mundo, and it's referred to as light even in the data books. The Nagashion, which is used for rescuing hollows and is made of light that we can actually see. How in the f do people come to the conclusion, oh no, nah, that's definitely high hypersonic, bro. No, nah, that's how quick it is. It's may maybe, maybe <laughs> supersonic at max, you know what I'm saying? You see oh, that light boy. right there? That light is literally hyped up by the head captain and he states, don't even bother. They're already inside that light. They're gone. It was way too quick. It all happened in the snap of a finger. Nah, it ain't that quick. The data books are just lying to all of us. Don't even worry about it, guys. You even have Arden Yeto dodging light at point blank range, which is even a narrative point to do with his weakness to light. And then X Axis, who is like the embodiment of light. He's essentially Bleach's version of Kizaru from One Piece, right? He's over there performing massively FTL feats. And Nanal, someone who doesn't even have a Zanpak toe and almost her undergarments when merely standing near Yamamoto, is able to perceive and understand that X Axis's movements are actually light based attacks. Ichigo in the damn Soul Society arc, while in Shikai, can blitz multiple characters that are clearly light speed one of which being the right-hand man of Yamamoto, and the other one being Soifon's lieutenant from the Stealth Force, one of the fastest captains in the series and praised by Aizen himself for her speed. That Ichigo not only scales to characters like that, but he also scales to lieutenants who are comparable to the ones that dodge the actual Nagashion point blank. And if you want to take it even further, this same fodder tier Ichigo, who later goes Bankai against characters like Byakuya, who scales to two other characters who are incredibly well known for their Shunpo ability, and we can say that Ichigo in this sense is faster than they are at that point in the story by far because of how crazy his Bankai is when he first goes into mm -hmm. it, right? I don't think anyone would even contest that idea. Well, this same Ichigo, later on against Ukiora, has a Bankai that is considerably stronger than that Bankai. Then he has a hollow qualification on top of that. Then he has his Vasto Lorde form on top of that, which makes him some god tier character, right? This makes him undoubtedly many times faster than light, let alone just light speed bare minimum. And if you want to take it further, even one of the weakest versions of Ichigo was performing relativistic feats as the data books say Seros are light based attacks. He can react to a point blank Sero, then slash through that said Sero, injuring the Menos Grande, and Menos Grande are hollow that Rukia believes, quote, the Royal Special Task Force must come and deal with if they ever appear. When she says this, she could be talking about the real Royal Zero Squad, but I think we all know that that's clearly not true, especially yeah. given the time frame of when those chapters came out. That was a very long time ago, like that was the Stone Age of Bleach, so I'm not going to take that literally, but I think what was actually being implied at that point in the story was actually just a member of the Gote 13, and this is just some old term that Taite Kubo used before mm -hmm. he actually invented the Gote 13, so he was just referring to, oh, some big guy from the Soul Society is going to have to come down here and deal with them, you know, e even as a squad, so it's obvious what was being implied. But anyway, regardless of that statement, she is referring to a class of Soul Reaper that is at least lieutenant to captain level, so this feat is unironically light speed, even all the way back in chapter 49, and as I said once more, when she's talking about a certain squad coming down, she's obviously referring to characters like Renji or Byakia, which appear only just a little bit later in the story so but i mean i guess when you take all of that into consideration and many of the other light speed scans that i haven't mentioned in this video and i'm gonna actually say for an individual video in the future right i guess the vasto lore is only the speed of sound because sonido translates to sound in spanish and the data book says that ichigo has godlike lightning type speed which is meant to be impressive yet in that same fight byakio is whipping out lightning based keto in their battle it's clearly like some bible tier wording to hype up 
of Ichigo's transformation. You know how they like to use the words godlike or holy or unlimited, <laughs> heavenly? Words like that, right? They use a lot of those words in old books and old mythology or even books about religion and things like that. It's not meant to be taken literally, but people still whip out that dusty ass data book scan and try to say, well, the data books say here that I'm. Um, <laughs> let me just scroll over to the other uh, page. Like lightning, Ichigo presses Bianchio with godlike speed and attacks him at close range. Therefore, well, we can assume and um, substantiate from that statement that Ichigo is only the speed of a lightning bolt. Like, do you guys understand how silly that is? Not going to get into that also, crap. And then, oh, then we have the gain stuff. I'm going to have to talk about that in my light speed video. Also, do they not realize that in that fight when Bianchio used that uh, Hado? Or, no, not Hado, Kido. Oh, no, yeah, it was, it was Hado. Uh, Hado number four, if I remember correctly. Did they not realize that at that point Ichigo wasn't at his best? Like, did they not realize that at that point that Ichigo was being slowed down because he was being crushed by the pressure of his own Bankai because he hadn't fully mastered his Bankai yet? So he wasn't the same as when he first transformed into, into his Bankai and then blissed Byakuya's. Like, it's, it's interesting how they just conveniently forget certain things whenever they try to downplay certain characters. Be on the lookout for that, please, guys. <laughs> Holy f some people are. As for defense and regeneration, the Vasto Lorde also has incredible regenerative ability, being able to heal a removed arm almost instantly while he was in a much weaker version of his full hollow form, and did this while fighting multiple Visards who would later go on to be relative to high tiers in the Aizen War in Katakuta Town. This is great because the version that fought Ushiora is much stronger, and these Visards panicked about the idea of having to fight it for over an hour, and when it whipped out a Cero, White also not only brought Ichigo back from the dead, but he used instant regeneration to restore the organs blown out of his chest by Ukiora, meaning he has better regenerative ability and more firepower than Ukiora does. Ichigo's hollow actually healed his organs, and that's something which Ukiora couldn't even do, and his speciality was actually the ability to regenerate limbs and body parts, and plus it's still cool to keep it in mind because he did all of this while he was in a weakened state. Alongside this, the Vasto Lorde was able to crush Ukiora's Lanza del Relampago with his bare hand, and cancel the explosion, which is a wild feat because it shows his Hieto is insanely strong, and this attack is stronger than both of their original fired Ceros. It also shows off a cool little detail in the manga about the Vasto Lorde, which even I myself missed until I reread it recently, and that's that the Vasto Lorde appears to have a Hieto technique that is very similar to what Grimja huh. does against Ask and Nuklevar in the War Arc, where they can strengthen one part of their body, making it black. Originally, when I read these chapters as they released, I assumed that this was just Grimjow showing off a technique where he can tap into his resurrection. Yeah, I just even noticed it myself. I can't believe I didn't time skip it just happened. Catch this when I was reading the manga. Grimjow's learned how to fight better in his release form. But as you can see in both panels, it's spreading across their fingers, and in Grimjow's case, spreading up his forearm in the exact same way. Meaning the Vasto Lorde used this. Yeah, see, you can see it here to strengthen his fingers into these crazy looking claws and pierce the lance, making it implode. So once again, the actual defense and regenerative ability of the Vasto Lorde is pretty damn impressive as we know that spiritual pressure is they didn't really put it in the anime defense, though, which, which is confirmed in the Kenpachi versus Ichigo battle meaning he without a doubt has the strongest Hieto we've seen at that point in the story. The Vasto Lorde can also use a technique later on in the series which wasn't actually used against Ukiora and that is a Seto which is mixed with a Getsuga Tensho. Originally a lot of people believe that this was called King's Gonrei Sero as a lot of the older translations referred to it as that but it appears it's just a translation error as in the official translations it's never called that whatsoever but anyway it's still a really cool technique I'm not going to go too much into it that's for future videos but as shown by how crazy a Gonrei Sero is stated to be because a Sparta rank 4 and higher are told not to release below the canopy of Lost No Chairs, as it may destroy Lost No Chairs. Any Sparta, even if they're the rank of Aranyedo or Zomari, if they use a Gwanri Sero, it makes them as lethal to Lost No Chairs as a Sparta rank 4 and higher releasing. Now, I'm not trying to scale those Sparta to the high tiers who are 4 and higher. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's just that it's insane what a Gwanri Sero can actually improve their ability to be. It shows us that the Gwanri Sero can actually multiply your power by at least 10 plus times an attack potency, meaning the Vasto Lorde with its full Shihaksho could be 250 times stronger than Ukiora at his most lethal attack potency. If the Vasto Lorde with a full Shihaksho is around 20 to 
25 times stronger than Ukiora, right? In his second release at max potential because he can actually block the Lanza del Relampago in the Hellburst movie and so on. Now, if this Vasto Lorde once more was wearing a full Shin Huck show, as shown when he appears in Ichigo's inner world when he's at full power, and he uses a Grandre Sero mixed with a Getsuga Tensho, he would multiply his power by 10, making him 250 times stronger than Ukiora. Now, a lot of you might have major issues with me making that statement, but please listen to what I have to say because it's not actually as crazy as it sounds. I want to put the nail in the coffin for two more points that are ridiculously idiotic and they're always brought up when it comes to downplaying Ichigo and the Vasto Lorde. Those two things being, Yami doesn't react to the Vasto Lorde, therefore it's weaker than him, and the Vasto Lorde is only as strong as it is because it gets buffs in Hell and Waco Mundo. Well, as I explained in my Ukiora video, Yami is horrendous at using Pesquisa and can't tell how strong any of his opponents are in battle. He couldn't even gauge Ichigo's spiritual pressure at the start of the Espada arc and this resulted in his arm getting cut off by an Ichigo who should have had no chance against him whatsoever. The data books even back this up and say that they weren't in any position to be worried whatsoever. He couldn't sense Yodoichi or Urahara's spiritual pressure and he thought that Kenpachi was weak. You can actually see him when they first arrive in Katakura Town and he's facing off against Ichigo. He's asking Ukiora how strong everybody is there. Like, what more do I need to say? <laughs> he did make those cocky ass statements to Ichigo later, but just remember, he was fighting a less than half powered holified Ichigo who was considerably weaker than his Master <laughs> Lorde form, and he still had trouble with this Ichigo and only started talking this way once he realized that Ukiora was dead. The same Ichigo who says multiple times, I can't even use my holification correctly in this fight because the mask feels heavy and weird. At the end of the day, Aizen was expecting this holo to eventually be a threat to himself as he says Ichigo. Ichigo should be stronger than he currently is, and for the Vasto Lorde to be weaker than Yami of all characters, when the Vasto Lorde wasn't even at full power, and we see that when Ichigo can use the full extent of its abilities without any restrictions, and it works alongside all of his other abilities, it's even a threat to Yuha Bark. Or even just take Dongai Ichigo as an example, his power when the Vasto Lorde, the Quincy powers, and the Shinigami powers are all mixed in together and working at once with no restrictions, his power is crazy. For mm -hmm. Aizen to have the expectation that Ichigo and his holo could eventually become a worthy fight for him, and yet it's weaker than the Esparta that Gein confirms Aizen is stronger than in base form. Without even using Kyoko Soigetsu, Gein specifically says the reason they follow Aizen is because they're scared of his power, not his hypnosis. That makes absolutely no narrative sense, nor sense mm -hmm. in general. Aizen himself says that he set out particular battles to take place so that Ichigo would master his holo abilities. If you want more information on this, I highly suggest watching my Ukiora video which is linked in the description below after you finish this video because I go much more in depth with this information and a lot of it is things that I shouldn't even need to explain but so many fans of this series and people who just don't Yeah, unfortunately the there's a lot of people who just crap unfortunately to have this points. explained the to them point that I'd like to talk about very quick shit that you would think is pretty damn obvious, obvious. Up and that's that. He gets a buff in Hell and Waco Mundo therefore if he was in Katakura Town he wouldn't be as strong as the top three as part of the fight there. Uryu makes a statement that says I don't know how close I is to turn hollows into Aronkars or how organized they are, but in any case, the Aronkars are sure to see us as both enemies and food, and we should assume that the hollows we meet here are several times stronger than they appear to be. But one thing that he also states is that small hollows can sustain themselves just by breathing. Now, this is actually something that Yami says when he enters the world of the living. He specifically says that the only difference between Waco Mundo and the real world is that it's actually harder to breathe, that being the difference right now. What we can interpret from this statement is that Uryu is saying that the most casual of hollows might be much stronger than they actually are when they appear. It's never once said by Uryu, Ichigo, or even Chad that, oh sh this Esparta is way stronger than he was in Katakura Town. Like, if you just take Ichigo, for example, when he fights against Grimja, he never makes any comment about Grimja being stronger than he was in the real world. Once again, the statement that's being made here is, oh, that makes sense why these little small uh, hollows that are like the size of a dog can survive because the reishi in the atmosphere is much more common and those hollows that you might run into that are the same as the ones in the real world right the ones that appeared in the first few episodes of bleach those guys instead of being complete fodder that you can just fart on they might actually take more than one blow to slash open and kill literally this statement which is so damn dumb and people try to use it to twist and change and down
downplay how strong the toughest Sparta are that are in Waco Mundo. It's literally the equivalent of a small hollow being able to eat and survive and not just die, and Yami finding it harder to breathe in the real world. And then you have Chad who makes a comment about his powers, but we barely ever see him get any sort of improvement in strength, and even if he did, he's a fodder character, so it's like, you can't even quantify him compared to the others later on anyway, but mm -hmm. once again, Yami says the actual difference is, oh, it's harder to breathe in the real world, like, whoop de doo not a big deal, I mean, even when they face off against Urahara and Yodoichi and all of those guys, Ukiura is still able to do really well against uh, Urahara, I mean, what's interesting with their encounter with Yodoichi and Urahara is that Yami fires a Sero at Yodoichi, which even the data books say is going to kill her, Urahara stuffs the attack with his Menahime, and then he fires a second one with the intent to kill Yami. Ukiora in base form, Sornito is over, slaps the attack with one hand while the other's in his pocket away with absolute ease. Now, if you were to say Ukiora goes second release in the real world and gets an increase of a hundred times, what do you think is going to happen to Mr. Kisuke Hatton Clogs Urahara? Just think about that for a second, guys, because even Ukiora says when he's about to leave, he's like, yeah, Yodoichi, you should probably stop talking shit, like, you know what's going to happen if we actually fight you properly, and the data books do specifically say that they were not in danger even after they appeared to help Ichigo. I just really wanted to shut that down because I have seen a few people who like to debate Bleach bring up the idea of, oh, well, the Hollows are much stronger in Waco Mundo when it's such a small amount of an increase. Like, sure, it buffs the fodder Hollows, but it doesn't do anything to the Esparta to a point where it's even noticeable. Oh, no. they can take an extra breath. It's like having an inhaler for them. Like, come on, guys, let's be honest. And then also there's the Halverse statement where, you know, Ichigo's Hollow goes more berserk and the powers can come out easier in Hell. Even if that was true and you were to say that Hell amps the Hollow, Ichigo makes the statement about the Vasto Lorde while he's on Earth and says that if it was to come out again, it would destroy the world. So once again, another statement that's being twisted to sue people down playing Bleach. Very silly. But anyway, guys, I just want to thank you all for watching this far into the video. I hope that this was enjoyable as the Ukiora video. I'm going to be doing videos on Stark and Grimjow and Yamamoto and lots of war stuff very soon. So please subscribe to me if you're new. I do apologize if this video... We can watch those videos too if you guys I want, actually by did the way. some of this off the cuff, but I feel like I did a pretty good job because people really do downplay the Vasto Lorde. This guy has, you know, planetary plus feats while he's at half power. Mm -hmm. And then he has his Gron Racero mixed with the Getsuga Tensho, which can amp that by many times over. So he is pretty damn strong. I mean, not only is he once again undoubtedly multi-planetary with ease, but he also has insanely fast regenerative ability and defense that far surpass someone like Ukiora. He is mm -hmm. also massively faster than light with ease. Like, it's, you can't even argue against it. It's that consistent among the story, but I guess if you want to be a smooth brain, you can just say that he's only supersonic because of the sonido <laughs> translation to sound. So I guess he's a speed of sound multi-planetary hollow, if you want to put it that way. Like, that just sounds f***ing retarded. But anyway, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. I'm going to go more into this sort of stuff in the future when I talk about war-related stuff and many of the other characters that I mentioned just before. But once again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do me a big favor and go check out my Ukiora video, which is linked in the description below. Go give that video a like. Go give it a comment. Go, I don't know, watch it. I hope you all enjoy that video. There'll be much more Bleach content in the future, but please, if you want more Bleach content, hit that subscribe button. Let me know. If you support me, I'll support Bleach. So thank Thank you all for watching. Okay, uh, there it is. Uh, that's the video. So yeah, Vasto Lorde Ichigo is pretty freaking powerful. I mean, in all, in all honesty, I um, I didn't think it, this video even needed to be made. But like you said, unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there who severely, and I mean severely, downplay. Um, you know, of uh, Ichigo's powers when he was in his Vasto Lorde form, and it's insane to me. And it's, uh, you know, like he said, there's a, it's, it's because of people out there who downplay his, uh, his power and his feats that videos like this even kind of need to be made in the first place. And it's honestly kind of insane because it's not like uh, Kubo made it difficult to understand. You can get this just by reading the manga. I mean, it's... Or, or just watching the anime. I mean, you can get all of this just by... Again, all you have to do is just, like I said, read the manga, watch the anime, and you can get this. But unfortunately, there are people who, even d despite doing that, still needed to have this explained to them. It's insane. And because of that, they... And it's not just them. There are people out there who, I feel like, purposely downplay his uh, his feats because they... Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they just don't like Ichigo's character or whatever. And, oh boy, it's insane. And it's... um, You know what it did? I feel like it also kind of... 
do you guys remember the screw attack Naruto versus Ichigo fight that they did where Naruto just completely obliterated uh, Ichigo which a lot of people called BS on that because again even in that video they completely if I remember correctly it's been a while since I've watched it but in that video they sort of kind of downplayed Ichigo's uh, abilities and they said that Naruto in his um, Actually, uh, conveniently enough, you can see it right there. But Naruto in his, uh, you know, um, six path uh, sage mode, you know, a right after he got the uh, the power from the uh, sage of six paths, not the Hokage Naruto, which is stronger. Although even the data books say that that version of Naruto only has a small portion of the power that the sage of six paths gave him during the fourth great ninja war arc. So. I, I guess you could say, I guess you could kind of debate, uh, well, no, um, the Hokage Naruto is definitely stronger, he definitely is, but this this was the version of Naruto that they used, like the uh, the Fourth Great Ninja War, uh, Sage of Six Paths mode uh, Naruto that they used against uh, Ichigo, not end of series uh, Naruto or Hokage Naruto, who, if, if it was Hokage Naruto, then yeah, I would say, yeah, Ichigo probably, well, I guess it would depend, are, are we talking uh, Mugetsu Ichigo or are we talking end of series full soul full souls um full uh zangetsu both zangetsus you know full power ichigo like no holding back the one who fought against yuha if we're talking that ichigo versus hokage naruto then yeah i think that would be a more interesting debate but the one that they did where they took uh, end of series naruto not hokage naruto versus mugetsu ichigo yeah that one i feel like they kind of screwed the pooch there they they really they really dropped the ball, but anyway, uh, that's gonna be the video, guys. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What did you guys think of the video? Did you like it? Did you did you uh, did you not like it? Uh, if you again, like I said, like I say in all these videos, or at least I'll try to say in all these videos. If you have your own video that you want me to watch, just let me know about it in the comments, and let me know the title and the YouTube channel that posted it. If you guys want me to find it, and I say that because. Again, I don't know why this is the case, but whenever someone tries to leave a link to the actual video, YouTube for some reason removes it. I don't know why, even though I've seen other people leave links to other videos and other channels and nothing seems to happen, but whatever. So just to get around that, the title of the video and the YouTube channel that posted it so I can find it if you guys want me to watch it. So this was How Strong Was Vassalor de Ichigo. Next one, of course, is going to be this one, uh, Mugetsu Ichigo, that we're going to watch. And this one, Jesus, this is 48 minutes long. It's even longer. But we're going to be watching it. And then we'll end it off with uh, Fullbring Shinigami Ichigo, which is, oh, thank God, it's even it's, <laughs> the, the length of the video is even less. And we could even watch the, uh, the Yuha video by Set the Programmer, which is very, very interesting. So... That's going to be it, guys. Let me know your thoughts, like I said, in the comment section down below. Remember to like the video, share the video, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And I want to say thank you to all the people who did subscribe to my channel. And remember to click on the bell icon because that will notify you whenever I post a brand new video. Thank you so much for watching and or listening. Remember to stay safe and take care of yourselves. And please join me for the next video. Bye for now.